CEO of Ascend Group, CEO of Ascend Money. CEO 集团以及 C Ascend Money CEO Richard Kowalski 先生。And we have Toya Pong, Tamawara Nuku, President of Ascend Money. Ascend Money, Zhong Cai, Tamawara Nuku, Sensei. Indeed, today, Lu Jiapra, to all of you, our distinguished guests from Thailand. And we are very pleased to uh, welcome you to Hong Kong, China. Since its inception about two years ago in October 2014, we have witnessed and financial, making its progress on financial inclusion step by step, bit by bit. And over this two year period, what has AF and financial achieved? Now let's take a look at the video. 接下来我们看看这个视频，了解一下蚂蚁金服在过去两年所做的进步。Yes, we don't have the video yet, but uh, for uh, for everybody to get to know A and F, well, actually A and F and financial A F. Um, instead of the video, I guess who better knows about A F than the CEO, Mr. Jing, Eric Jing, Liu Xing. You can look here to get the video. Tell us about it. In the past two years, A F and financial have already made progress. 还有，跟我们分享他的 visions and dreams。有请。Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, uh, dear media friends, and uh, all the distinguished, distinguished guests. Welcome to today's event. Actually, Thailand has recently experienced a great loss. With respect of His Majesty, the Thai King. I would like to suggest we observe a minute silence. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you all. I would like to continue my present presentation today. Today we're going to hear, I'm here to announce the strategic partnership between N Financial and AC Money, AC Group. So I will make that announcement by starting with introducing N Financial first. So here is the end financial, end financial mission. So we want to bring small but wonderful changes to the world by making financial services accessible for everyone with technologies. Actually, end represents small but wonderful. This is our ecosystem. We work closely for the last have years with our other financial institutions and with other partners to provide financial inclusion to individuals and to their SMEs. In China, 
and globally. So here's the product service we offered along the last 12 journey. So we provide the service we offer in ranging from the payment to wealth management, cash management, and a cheap SME, SME and consumer lending. And then it's done to your insurance products, online insurance, and credit storing products. So you can see that for the last 12 years, we have served over 450 million payment users with digital manner. And in terms of wealth management, not only we provide cash management products, but also we provide mutual fund investment and other many, many, I mean, investment products for our consumers. And we started your SME landings a few years ago. So we're thinking about you know, what we can do for the SMEs, how we can let them to more easily get financed. So we start providing SMEs landing on collateral. So loans to them, to help them grow their business, help them create the jobs. So over the last few years, we have, all, we have already served 4 million SMEs so far. Insurance products. We are also not just, I mean, the, on, in online insurance platforms, we work with over 80 insurance companies in China. So all the insurance products we have delivered over the platforms, I guess over 2,000 products there. So we have served over 300 million, I mean, people in China to have them to, I mean, buy the insurance products. So credit is going, the same thing. So this, this is not about cross selling. This is not about cross selling product to another. This is about this is also this is all all these things happen based on our deep understanding of the consumers. So this is the power of the network effect. So really, we can. I mean, in the early days, if it takes oh maybe over thirty months, three zero months for to develop products across one hundred one hundred million US uh, uh, user base. But nowadays, it only takes us less than ten months. We can develop products that's across 100,000 users mark, mark. So this is a really a I mean, network effect. And we are, and finance is quite, I mean, technology savvy. We really, we apply the leading, I mean, the cutting edge technologies into our operations. To me, to end financial, I mean, technology does not mean technology itself, or it's not, a, it's, it's only, I mean, technology, it is only meaning that we how we can use that to, to really solve the problems for the SMEs and for the individuals. So from early days, we using, I mean, mobile internet, big data, cloud computing. Nowadays, we also deploy, I mean, AI, I mean, those biometrics into our operations. I can show you one example, which is about, you know, cloud computing uh, technologies. You know, you know, we are uh, for the Double Eleven, on the, in the Double Eleven Timor Festival, which is coming soon this year, right? Every year, I mean, we are, the big trust challenge is that, you know, how you can process number of transactions at peak time, I mean, very successfully and very efficiently, without any interruption. This is a huge challenge for us. So we're trying to sharpen our technology to take cope with that challenge. So nowadays, I would say, we are definitely the need, what is needing, I mean, technology company in terms of, I mean, in that is matched by number of transactions we can process per, per second. And the cost of that is very, very minimum. So we're using technology to, to, to solve the problems, and during that, pro, during that pro process, we also advance the technology to the next level. This is how, I mean, technologies can be applied in our ecosystems. One of the examples of AI, a lot of people are talking AI every day, it's very hard world, right, recently. But we actually were using AI a few, years, a few years back, since a few years back. AI actually is everywhere we are inside our company operations. I can share two examples. Number one is regarding security of transactions and security of account, of account. You know, we use um, deep learning technologies to do our modeling. And we deploy the risk management, risk real time risk management engine inside the ecosystems. You know, currently our fault loss rate of RDP account is only, is much less than 0.1 BPS, which is definitely unparalleled in the world. 
So this is how powerful we are using technology, using data. Another example is about customer service. Also the same example in last, last year's double uh, eleven, the shopping festival. 95% of our customer service was handled by our George Robert online with a very high satisfaction rate. So whether you when whatever customers the call, they make a call to us, all they just I mean type their questions through our mobile phone. So I mean all the questions can be answered via, via our we are our I mean, mach machine, and uh, which is based on our deep learning technologies and NLP, natural and uh, natural language processing, this kind of technologies. So this is how just two small cases showing about how we using AI inside office to enable all the operations, to increase efficiency and to enable the innovations. I'd like to share three areas of for, for focus. We three areas we focus on for end financial. Number one is globalization. We aim to develop a new global digital financial ecosystems by working closely with the partners around the world. We have two approach. We want to serve the two billion people in the next ten years. That's our vision. And we, we have two approaches. Number one, we collaborate, we cooperate with leading local partners. We work with PTM India partner very closely in the Indian market. Only take about say 16 months. We have them to build the user base from about 20 million to right now 150 million. I guess PTM is the fourth largest wallet in the world right now. So we, we share the technology with them. We really work very closely together side by side. So this is how this is the manner we work with our partners. So today again we can see we really great have an agent became our partners, strategic partners in China and in the United Markets as well. And then secondly a second approach is, is that we also increase Alipay merchant accepting worldwide. So I mean we great we have a uh, top class we have more we elaborate more on that later on today. The second folks that want to be the CFO for the 20 million SMEs, small and micro enterprises. So what does F F CFO mean? So we, you know, Alibaba have been have, have SMEs to do their business right since the beginning, since the inception of our business. So a few days back, we have them to, we, are, we have them to get, you know, financed. To have them have financing support to do their business and to, to create jobs. But today, we want to expand their service, not only on finance, actually we need a lot of service, for example, the cash management. We need more tailor-made financial, I mean, payment product for them, domestically and across board. So these are things we are focused on. We really want to be there, careful for them, to help them take care of the business, to help them travel, I mean, their operations, to have them increase efficiency. This is what this is what we can do for them. This is the kind of we call inclusive financial service. Because I mean, right now they are really lack of this kind of support. So this is what we want to be with to be with them. In particular, I want to share Kobe. Kobe is a new ecosystem for offline local service systems. Kobe is jointly invested by Alibaba and any financial group. So that these local, I mean local service ecosystems, we are going to build that in, in joint efforts with all with other independent service vendors, with all the partners for offline. We want to have the merchants to serve consumers better. For local service business, it's not about we. It's not only about we, we bring the traffic from online. Actually, it's all about that. How we can know how help merchants know consumers better? How they can really, I mean, develop them as the membership? How can they really to do their content marketing, personalized marketing, to increase their commercial weight, commercial weight? How can help them to increase the efficiency of the operations? This is what all they really care about. This is what we need, what, what they need. I mean, for consumer on our side, it's really about it's not about a payment, um, it's not about a transaction only. It's about how can you 
have, hence you must make a decision. How you can work together with merchants to really offer the products that's just the consumer wants. This is important. This is not about payment, this is not about transaction sales. It's about deep understanding of consumers. It's about deep understanding of the data. It's about whether we can, I mean, fostering ecosystems work together to put consumer centric. This is the ecosystem we work closely with our partners for offline. And third, the third focus is that we want to build a new and robust credit systems. You know, the traditional um, credit system is basically relying on your borrowing history or repayment history. But nowadays, because of technology, it enables really be using, I mean, again, deep learning this kind of technology to direct the credit profiling of consumers and the individuals by putting together different sets of data. So this is really powerful. And this ecosystem, this credit systems will not only be a backbone for our entire ecosystems, but also be the backbone, be the infrastructure for the entire society, for the financial sector and for the commercial sector. To really have people, to really can bring with the high score, with the bad credit, to really can have, I mean, merchants and other suppliers bring bad use experience to the consumers. To let consumers consume more. That could have, consumers have more interaction with different, I mean, service vendors. So by doing that, we have a lot of data to eventually, I mean again, to enhance the credit profiling. So this is the kind of uh, ecosystem we, we build together. So merchants, consumers, we enable, I mean, uh, we facilitate the communication, the conversation between them by developing a new credit systems. I want to emphasize that and financial, this is three focus, this is three areas of focus of and financial. But the critical things I want to emphasize that it's about to be and financial part open. It's an open, it's transparent, the ecosystems we are building today in joint efforts with all our partners. We really invite our partners. We want always to work with our partners to build a more transparent and more I mean, digitalized. I mean, ways to really bring the, bring the, to really help them to, I mean, a, a bad night. So we work with, we work, we work with close, we work, sorry, we work close with our partners in, in different parts of the world. Today, I'm very happy to announce the strategic partnership with the ASEAN group, which is part of CP Group. I mean, CP Group is very, we have a very tremendous success in China and around the world. So we are very happy, very excited today we can have this partnership with them. And in China, we're going to, to launch digital I mean, payments and digital financial service to those people underserved and unserved to really bring financial more inclusive to the people in the Thailand in the rest of Southeast Asia. I'm very happy to be here today and announce transactions Announce partnership together with the senior management of the ASEAN Group. I mean, here today, let's shake hands together. Let's walk towards a big vision, big vision of and and the ASEAN Group. So, thank you, and uh, all the media friends, all the district guests. I mean, we're here today. I'm very excited to witness have you with this order, this strategic partnership with between and and the ASEAN Group. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Mary Jane. As you might have noticed, we have more distinguished guests joining us now. And as Eric mentioned, after India's Paytm, and Financial has ushered a new partner to join its ecosystem, and that is Thailand's leading fintech company, SA Group. Now let's welcome up here Mr. Subachai Chiravano to tell us more about SN's hopes and dreams in joining this venture with and financial.
Good morning, Chairman and Chairman and all the distinguished guests, all the media friends. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we are very honored to be uh, part of partnership with the uh, Anthony Show. I would like to make a brief introduction of the CP group and the asset group. And then certainly Mr. Kunumai will come up and talk about the business itself uh, on the latest stage. CP Group was founded by the four brothers of the Sheraton. Uh, one of the four brothers is here, uh, which is Mr. Denim Sheraton. We are an agro based company and then diversify into uh, a retail and distribution business, telecom and media, and there are other industry of their certifications. We are a proud Thai-based company, which now invested over 20 countries around the world, especially in the Asian region. And we are even more proud as a Thai company to have grown and thrived under the reins of His Majesty King Kumi Pon. We are very much operating our business with gratitude and how we have grown in Thailand and out of Thailand, seeing the Thailand, Thailand itself developed, even though it's not the most modern country in the world, but Thailand is full of smile and people that are very open with open culture. And this is where we begin our business. So again, it is a big loss to the Thai people that we lost the, our spiritual leaders who actually have been a guiding light, being a good example to all the Thais. I would like to be able to mention that because this is really deep in our heart how we feel about our king. Ascent Group was formed about nine years ago, 2007, under the uh, payments license and then starting to diversify into other areas like the e-wallets and into the nano financing as of two years ago. May I talk just a little bit about the CP principle? Again, the, our visions and principle pretty much align with the uh, end financial. And the principle of the CP group is always taking into account so-called principle of three benefits. So wherever CP group invests in and looking for partnership, we always prioritize how we do the business by the benefits have to be created for the country we invested in. Followed by the society and for the people of where we invested in. And then the last is for the company to be able to benefit from those investments and not the forward. So these are the key principles that we believe uh, we are in alignment and we are in following the same visions as the Ants Financial. Because CP Group have grown from a very humble a business, from a vegetable seed shops. I've been working with farmers um, in the past many years and been able to see how the underprivileged, how the, uh, the market developed from, from the farm into the feed, into the food areas. So the farmers and the underprivileged areas, the local development areas, are at the very heart of the CP group. Our chairmen uh, always say that all the farmers are our lifelong partners. So this is uh, the CP group principles in the agro-based uh, business. Now, Essen have followed this principle and its missions also reflected 
what CP groups have been doing its business in the past many, many decades. I would like to say that the times have arrived in the way that the digital connectivities through the broadband technology, whether it's wireline broadband or wireless broadband like 4G, have actually now expanded to the point that people are digitally connected you know, from the people from the very bottom to the very top. These connectivities or digital connectivities are changing and reforming the landscapes and creating a so-called level playing field in the access to information, meaningful information, access to the capitals in a fair and transparent manner. The industry vertically will be consolidated in a way that all the hierarchies and layers of the value chain will be bypassed. So the consumers or the people will be able to efficiently and transparently get to be fulfilled and get to what they want. Horizontally, they can get access to meaningful information and knowledge. This has never happened before you know, in an inclusive way. We wanted, as a group, want to take part in this evolution and this transformation. Payments and access to financing, access to capitals, knowing the customers, what they need and what they want, is very key of value creation of Essence Group going forward. And yes, with the technology and knowledge and partnership with N Financial, it will support and help Essence to move even faster and create even more values to the market with this changing landscape. Our vision stays here very clear. We create opportunities for all through digital platform and services. And our goal in a very short or medium term is to be the leaders in fintech and digital enabler services in Southeast Asia by 2018. It's quite an ambitious goal, but our team together with the end financial is ready to take up this goal. The Essence Group complies of uh, three major business areas. The first area is the e-payments and the e-lending. This is the areas that we call ourselves Essence Money. This is where the, the partnership are being cemented as of today's event. Second part is the e-business and e procurement covering from B2B, B2C, and C2C. And the third area is digital marketing and crowd services. These are also the other areas that we are exploring and learning from the Alibaba group. We believe that there is a lot more to learn and we are just scratching the surface of how we actually are knowing our customers, our users, and how can we actually be able to aggregate the information and the ecosystems that CP Group provides in Thailand and in this region. From the agro base, food and agro base, and a very deep integrated, from what I mentioned, starting from farm, feed, and food to the end consumers, to the digital uh, connectivities, communications, how we actually link the supply and demand together, and how we can create the values 
through understanding the market better, both from the consumer side and from the supply side. And third area is the retail and distribution area, such as 7-Elevens or Lotus or Macro, for example, which is the wholesaling. These are the areas that we can see the logistical part of how geographically you know, the products are moving and how values are being transferred. So with this full ecosystem, it would give us the abilities to have the essential data, the data analytics abilities to look at how we actually be able to learn about the credits and about the needs of the customers. In this case, we are gearing toward the underprivileged, the uh, areas that are under under banks market, where they have actually less opportunities and are being taken advantage of from the middleman or the shark loans, which is again create an efficiency in the market. So we expect that the, the, the power of the information that we can gather around the group and also hopefully from other partners that could join us to create values, again, not from making just the margin from the business, each business, but to create the values from the efficiency and transparency of the system. So the information will be much more meaningful and valuable and create a win-win to all. Lastly, I would like to say thank you to our Chairman Danin and Chairman Jack who have initiated the exploration of this partnership. I would like to thank you, Lucy, Joe Sai, Mr. Eric, Sabrina, and Kenny, all of the executives of the end financials who have been very very inspirational for us not only as we are exploring the partnership we have been learning a lot from the end financial culture and how people in end financial work and we are very proud and very honored to have had this partnership with end financial thank you very much now, what beautiful magic might come through this beautiful partnership between ANA, that is and Financial, and Ascend Group? Well, what is Ascend Group's vision about this strategic partnership? And we have here with us Mr. Punama Kowonsa to fill us in. Please, indeed. Thank you everyone. Dear Mr. Chairman, Jack Hua, and our Chairman Tanin, and our distinguished guests. It's my great honor to be here. And it's a great day for Ascent, it's a great day for Thailand, and it's a great day for Southeast Asians. I will spend the next 10 minutes or less to tell you why it's a great day. And we are so excited about our future together with Ant Financial. First, why are we here? That the mission of Asset Money we created so that we enable everyone access to innovative financial services so that they can have a better life. We feel, we feel very passionately that financial access is a basic human right that everyone deserves to have. Unfortunately, that's not the case today, and we want to solve that. In Southeast Asia, there's a huge large pain point and therefore, large opportunity as well. It started off with we have large, pretty large populations, about 620 million altogether, and mostly are very young. 
about 70% is under the age of 40 years old. And the population is still growing. We're still making babies. The, about 1.2% growth on year on year basis. However, most people are underserved. About 60%, more than 60% is unbanked. Unbanked means in their life, they only deal with cash. There's no digital bank at all. Therefore, our business goal we set for ourselves is to become the largest financial service provider in Southeast Asia with a target of over 100 million customers and SME by 2020. And we are on the way. We have two target segments the digital consumers that we know it, and then the unbanked and the underbanked. Let me walk you through. The digital consumers, Southeast Asian is already very digital savvy. On the left hand side, you can see that as a standard, Facebook, if you count city in the world, Bangkok, Thailand would be the capital city of Facebook with the highest number of face Facebook users in one city. We beat out New York, Tokyo, everywhere else on earth. Facebook, we have more users in the world than anywhere else. The second place on earth with the most Facebook user as a city is Jakarta, Indonesia. YouTube, Thailand and Vietnam are among the top 10 YouTube viewers in the world. And the, the whole region is now equipped with internet penetration driving from mobile. The, we have countries like Thailand where the, thanks to crew and other companies, we now up to 60% of populations with internet access. Um, and the um, regional average is about 44% and fast increasing. However, most people still use cash. The world leading country is Sweden. Only 4.4% of transactions is now conduct conducting by cash. In Southeast Asia, it's 98% or more. The Thailand, 98.5. Indonesia, 98.9. .9. So there's a huge problem with this. We want to solve it. An even bigger problem and social problem as well is the unbanked, underbanked populations. More than 60% has no bank account. And these are people like the children, the, the, the construction worker, rural people, farmers. They have no bank account at all. All their life, only cash. And only deal with cash. Their life opportunity is very limited. There's no credit. They cannot borrow. And when you look at countries like Thailand, Thailand is very well banked population, but there's still a large underbanked populations. The, about 60% of Thai people cannot qualify for loan because they don't have regular proof of income. When you look at Indonesia, 65% or 258 million have no bank account, and about 90% of them are, uh, are underserved, underbanked. Our strategy in serving our customers is two, uh, twofold. First, on the digital consumers, uh, our wallet applications to enable the, to connect the users with the financial services. Importantly, the underbanked populations, we need to serve them the, with agent networks. And I'll tell you a little bit more later on. So our strategy is to be the platform connecting the users and the financial service provider in the most effective way possible. And the way we do that, is using data analytics to provide the customization, personalizations, and intelligence the, so that our customers can get better values, better convenience the, to our service provider, which include merchants, the, both online and offline merchants, lending, the investment, insurance, and other services. For the digital consumers, the, our wallet, wallet app, the uh, super app we learned a lot from Alipay, the, where from our applications, you can basically spend your life, the payment life, and other financial services life, depending on this wallet. Whether by goods in 7-Eleven, offline store, transfer money overseas, buy things, buy ticket online, do investment, buying insurance. Very convenient. Importantly for the unbanked populations, these are the people that, that they have only have cash. So the problem is that how do you convert cash into digital. They don't trust bank. 
right? They don't even know a bank for the most cases. So we set up the, the agent network. These are mom and pop shops, the um, you know, store owners that we convert them at a very cost effective way so that they can build trust with the end customers, act as a cash in and cash out the, the agents so that money, physical cash can become digital, digital money. In effect, they serve the functions of banks to the unbanked people. So today, we have approximately um, 50,000 agents throughout Southeast Asians. The, in Indonesia, we have 23,000. And by the end of next year, the, we plan to have 500,000, half a million agents. So that everywhere you go, our unbanked populations can access the, our agent within 15 minutes. Our partnership with Ant Financials bring about three key important areas. One is about enabling the Alipay Plus Global Network, payment network, so that everywhere you go, Chinese traveler travel to Thailand can use Alipay wallet that without needing for cash. For Thai consumers, the traveling abroad will be accepted anywhere that Alipay wallet accepted. So in effect, we become a part of very important and smart uh, payment network. Secondly, it's about technology enabling. The Alipay has proven to the world that the massive super scale of the financial service cloud and parallel by anything that we have seen, uh, which is very important because as we grow, it's critical that we uh, be very prudent uh, with the technology. So we will adopt the Alipay financial service cloud within our market. And lastly, in the big area, it's about uh, knowledge sharing. That goes both ways. We learned a lot tremendously from Ant already in how to approach the market, uh, the service, the use cases. And likewise, the, we, the Ant is very open to learn from us in terms of how to serve the unbanked populations. So in summary, the, we are very thankful. Thankful the Chairman Jack, Thank you, our chairman, Kenin, for giving us opportunity to be here. Without you, we wouldn't be here. Thank you to the team, the, um, and in addition to the leadership teams that the principal chair mentioned, I also want to thank the working team, the working team of Ant, the, um, you know, Kenny Tayong, the, um, Joanna, and many others, the, and also our working team, who have spent many sleep, sleepless nights the, in working this partnership work. We are highly thankful. Without uh, without you guys, we also cannot be here. So, um, and I thank you, the media, uh, to be a part of us, to be along this journey, to be an inspiration. And that's why we're excited, because together, we can make the life of hundreds of millions uh, of Thai people and Southeast Asian people much better because we have lived. Thank you. Thank you Now with the beautiful partnership between uh, M Financial and Ascend Money, what's gonna happen? Of course, beautiful things, somebody's gonna say, can you feel the love tonight? I'm sure one of them might be Jack Ma, Ma Lop Shin. The other one being a distinguished guest from Thailand, Mr. Chiravano. Tommy Chiravano. And to observe and celebrate this historic moment, it's time to exchange a bit of heart to celebrate the bond between M Financial and the same money. We have the presence of Mr. Jack Ma and also Mr. Tani Shavano to come up here for an exchange of gifts. Welcome.
各位媒體朋友等陣，我哋交換完禮物之後咧，先再慢慢認識好唔好 ？So now on behalf of M Financial, Mr. Jack Ma is going to present to Mr. Sharvana a set of ceramic ants. Because ants have big dreams too, even though they're very small. And stream, low stream. That is M Financial's model. And on behalf of Ascent Money, Mr. Tani Charbano is presenting to Jack Ma a royal picture of the king. And also a dream boat, a royal boat that represents the dream boat between A and A. One more gift from Ant Financial, and that's a sewer ant. That means the ant is gonna strike outside of China and into the world. Thank you very much. Now, please, the two, uh, please send your bill. Because media friends, we want to take a picture with you. Been aiming to share its dreams and visions with more overseas partners. Today we found a partner, and since its inception, M Financial has set its sight on global markets, cultivating new markets, and also assuring new partners. Now we have a. VP, Senior VP of M Financial, Mr. Douglas Spagan, to share with us more about this M Financial project. Please welcome Mr. Douglas Spagan to the stage when he's ready. Thank you very much. Very uh, pleased to be here today to share with you some thoughts about the globalization strategy uh, for Ant Financial. As Eric Jane mentioned in his uh, talk, globalization for both consumers and small and medium-sized enterprises 
is an important element uh, to our strategy at AMP Financial. And the partnerships like the one that were announced here today with Ascend Money is absolutely central to that globalization strategy. So how are we planning on globalizing at AMP Financial? Two primary ways, a dual path. One is through merchant acceptance uh, to companies around the world. And secondly, is through local partnerships. I'd like to share with you some details about each of these uh, strategies today. We have 450 million consumers in China who travel abroad uh, every year. Over 120 million of them travel abroad, in fact, every year. And we look to provide them with a simple and convenient source of payment. Uh, when they go uh, abroad. The Chinese consumers, interestingly, are amongst the highest spending consumers uh, when, when they travel abroad. And there's an increasing number of them, increasing at 15 to 20% per year. So it's a very attractive kind of population of consumers. When they can use Ali Pay abroad, they have a simple, convenient, and easy way to pay that they're familiar with at home. We're also working to provide those consumers with a way to pay online. And so we have agreements with online retailers around the world to accept Alipay. You can see some of the leading names here, like King Tower in Thailand, Sasa here in Hong Kong, and other leading names of global uh, retailers. Beyond online, we also offer our consumers ability to pay in online to offline services. And so for example, we announced an agreement with Uber to serve our, our customers in over 70 markets uh, around the world. We're also expanding into offline markets to give our consumers a chance to buy things in store payments as well as online. Indeed today, we have over 80,000 merchants uh, that will accept Alipay around the world. These include big names like Harrods, Selfridges, here in Hong Kong, like Sasa, in Korea, names like Lotte, and so many of the re leading retailers uh, around the world. We're also working with local acquirers in markets and payment companies to facilitate these services. You can see a number of the key names here. How does it work for our users when they travel abroad? Here's a, a quick vignette on the power of Alipay when one of our users wants to use the service overseas. First, before the trip, they can explore how they want to travel, what airline they choose, what hotel they want to use, and those merchants can communicate with our consumers about their services. Why should they choose that hotel or this airline? Then during the trip, when consumers land, we can communicate to them what are local restaurants that they can frequent? Where can they buy different goods and services? And merchants can target those users to give them promotions, to give them ideas of what things that they may want to buy in their individual stores. The payment is simple and easy in a form that is convenient to our users. And then this relationship can even be continued after the trip, where if people enjoyed something that they bought from a particular retailer, they can then buy that online and continue the relationship. The second part of our strategy is local partnerships. And our business of a Global financial lifestyle and financial technology is inherently local. And to provide inclusive finance in these markets, we have a strategy of partnerships around the world. Importantly, the one we're announcing today with Ascend Money. One of our first partnerships was in India. And India is a very interesting market, it's a huge market with a large population, a large unbanked 
group of consumers, and they have very unique local needs. Their familiarity, their love of the cinema, their unique forms of transportation, as you can see here uh, in this slide. We chose to work with KTM, a local partner there, to build our e-wallet and capabilities within that market. For, with providing them with technology, with a unique product set, and then with capabilities such as risk management, we were enable, able to enable KTM to offer a much superior service to many other players in the market. Through that, they were able to increase their number of users from 35 million when we started working with them about a year and a half ago to over 150 million today. And those consumers transact on average 3 million a day. So a very successful business. Which brings me to the exciting news of today, our partnership with Ascend Money. Thailand is a very important market for Ant Financial. We looked at it, Thailand has a very large population. A good number of those consumers are unbanked or underbanked. And we wanted to find a way to serve them and to provide financial inclusion similar to what we've done in China. And we looked at the potential partners, the Ascend Group quickly rose to the top as one that shared our same mission and our same goals. As you heard Poonamath describe earlier, we want to give people a chance to have access to the financial services system, those that have not previously. And working with Ascend, we have a high degree of confidence we're gonna be able to achieve that in Thailand. Why are we so excited about Ascend Money? Three primary things. First, the Ascend management team is the one we think is one of the best in the market. Punama's understanding of payments, of digital technology, uh, was the, one of the leading in the industry. And if, as we've had the chance to work with he and his management team over the last several months, we've realized what, how important it is to have that local knowledge and that understanding uh, within the market. Secondly, they have great local connectivity. This is an organization that understands the needs of consumers, understands what they're looking to buy, why, and how we can provide superior service to them. And third, they're part of a broader group that has connectivity through mobile operations, other forms of services that really uh, makes for much more successful uh, overall organization. So Ascend was clearly the right partner for us, and we're very pleased to be here today uh, to announce this partnership. We've set our goals high to achieve over 10 million consumers in Thailand, local consumers, by the year 2020. And so it's a very exciting partnership within Thailand, and we're very pleased to be working with Punamas and his management team in the coming years. So I hope that gives you a sense of the globalization strategy of Ant Financial and what we're looking to achieve. We set our global goals high as well. We aim to serve over two billion people in the coming 10 years. This is an ambitious goal, but one that we think we can achieve by using technology and using unique solutions to serve our consumers and to enhance their lifestyle all around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Please stay with us. We enjoy your presence here. And I'm sure everybody now is more intrigued about and financial expectations and aspirations. So right now we're gonna invite up here with us Miranda Sheck of N Financial to start a Q&A session together with Mr. Punama Wichiku Walsa.
So thank you very much. Uh, we now please be seated, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, we have Douglas here tonight to, uh, today to take the question, and we have Mr. Punamal as well. So can we have the lights on so I can see our media friends? Uh, for any media who have questions, could you please put up your hands and please let us know which media you represent. Yeah, um, so our gentlemen are ready? Go ahead. For the lady over there. Oh, um, this is Rebecca, sorry. Yeah, sorry, we'll have you in a second. Yes, please. Um, this is Rebecca from China Business News. I have two questions. And the first one is that in all of the financial services, and uh, which one is the most important, you think, for consumers? Uh, and the second question is that in the process of inclusive finance, and what's the biggest, uh, biggest difficulty you are facing now? Thank you. Mr. Pinnemann? Okay, sure. Um, so in terms of the range of uh, financial services, I guess I'd say that there's not one that is necessarily the most important. What I think both of our organizations do is to try to tailor our offering to the needs of the individual consumer. And indeed, the power of our platform is to take advantage of what the consumers are looking to do and the information that we can gather about them to provide tailored solutions. I'd say you know, payments is at the core of what we do. So probably the most important because that's used all day and every day uh, in terms of the activities. But when you think about lending, insurance, and all the other financial services, they're uh, equally important. Thanks. Um, so on the second question, um, Rebecca, regarding on the financial uh, inclusions, what is the most difficult thing? The, it's three things in this order. Number one, first and foremost, is about how do you create trust, right? The money is about trust. And the thing to remember here is that being digital doesn't necessarily mean that they trust digital money. It's a two separate things, right? What we have seen already um, in Thailand and elsewhere in Southeast Asia, people use Facebook, use digital a lot, but they still use a lot, uh, mostly cash because they don't trust digital money, right? So it's about building trust, and that's a hard work that we must do um, in order for customers to depart their physical cash. Um, and for some people, all their life, the only thing they know is cash. Second thing is about how do you convert cash uh, into the digital. And that's where I'm setting up the agent network or working with partners that convert cash to digital uh, is extremely important and challenging because we're talking about physical distributions now. Um, thirdly, it's about use cases. What, is, what are the key use cases that people want to use digital money um, that talk about the um, payments, and in the future, the, it's certainly about lending so that they can borrow to, uh, to meet their livelihood. So in summary, three things. Building trust, the, create the, the agent network, or cash in and cash out network. And third, the, it's about use cases. Yeah, thank you very much. And for the second question for the lady over there, she wants to translate. Thank you. Hi, I'm a reporter with the Wall Street Journal. I have two questions. First, can you tell us more details about the, this agreement, uh, this uh, cooperation with Ascent? How much money did Ant invest into Ascent? Is it for the 20% stake? And is there a plan to increase that stake in the near future? And also, the second question is more about Ant's global plans. It seems like you know Ant's mostly focused on facilitating Chinese. Uh, uh, travelers or Alipay users, which are mostly Chinese at, at the moment. Is there any plan to reach out to your uh, to the global market or global consumers? And I, I think that the policy regulation now is like only Chinese people can have their accounts on Alipay. And the overseas market is largely closed still for Ant. So can you just address to that? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, first on your first question as it relates to the uh, agreement between Ant Financial and Ascend, uh, today we're not disclosing the details of that agreement in terms of the dollar amount or the percentage. What we're focused on really, I think, from an ant financial perspective, is choosing partners in the local market who we view as top quality, well-positioned companies that have an unparalleled understanding of the local market. And Ascend Money really brings that to the equation. In addition to a great management team, 
and a great local connectivity. And so our focus has all been on choosing the right partner, and we're so excited about the opportunity to affiliate with Ascend today. To your second question on the international uh, expansion and the focus of, of Ant, yes, we do have a focus on serving the and financial customers who are traveling abroad. And so the 120 million that go every year uh, are a focus of people we can serve. Indeed, now when they go to Thailand, we'll be able to help them uh, to buy goods and services uh, through Thailand. But that's only a component of the strategy. The second component is to really build a local user base and to build that local presence. To do that, we're choosing to work with partners in those local markets. And so hence the agreement today with Ascend. Because Ascend has local licenses, local position, and has built up a strong local business in Thailand today. And we thought it far superior to work with Punamat and his team in building a local presence than to try to go and establish our own. And we think that we can provide technology, we can provide you know, experience in terms of different products, we can provide risk management to enhance his platform, where he really knows the consumers and he really knows the local uh, market. And through that, we think we're gonna have a superior business than we could have in any other way. Okay, thank you. The next question. Uh, the gentleman over there. I am a journalist with Reuters. I wanted to um, ask a couple of questions. First, um, to uh, Ascend, uh, you, you, as uh, um, Douglas mentioned, you have some licenses to operate in different uh, services in Thailand. Do you uh, guys also have a banking license? Do you, do you intend to obtain one? Uh, and then for uh, Douglas, I wanted to ask, uh, you mentioned that payment is at the core, but you know, insurance and lending, was equally important. Do you guys intend to offer insurance and lending services uh, internationally through you know these local partnerships that you guys have in India, in Thailand, in Korea, and elsewhere? Sure. Yeah. So the, um, on the, on on first part regarding to the license, the, our the strategy is to get the proper license. The, that's the foundations, right? Um, so in every country that we operate in, we ensure that we get the, all the proper license. So in six countries we operate in, we have e-money license um, where available. So that's namely country of Thailand, country of Vietnam, country of Indonesia, and Philippines. Now for two additional countries, um, namely Myanmar and Cambodia, those countries don't have a proper e-money license yet. So we operate under what's called the trust third party license with a sponsor bank, right? The, with that, we are fully licensed to operate the, in all countries. And in fact, that makes us the only company on earth that have proper license in all the, this country in Southeast Asia. Um, and we will continue to acquire the, all the license necessary to operate our business where we see the significant the pain point and level of opportunity. In regard to whether we want to be a full bank, that we have a very hard debate on that. And you know, we, we don't close um, that options, but at the moment, we don't see that it's a necessity that to have a full bank license. We can operate serving the customer at the pain point uh, with the e-money license, the lending license that we have today. So the, in addition to e-money license, we also apply lending license that in most of the countries we operate in as well. Thank you. And to your second question, in terms of offering other financial services in different markets, we really are going to tailor our product offering to the needs of the local market uh, and to also obviously comply with the regulations in that market. We're leading first with payment um, and then related services around payments, but we may very well offer other uh, products and services kind of market by market, and that will be assessed. And so you look at what we do in China today, both on the lending side to consumers and SMEs, uh, could be uh, offered in these different countries. Insurance and investment management are things that we'll certainly will be considering um, and offering as, as, as our strategy develops in these markets. Okay, another question. Yes, this lady in the front, thank you. Sure, 
题想问呃费根先生，呃，第一个问题是说，您说，就您刚刚说未来十年，蚂蚁金服希望在全球服务超过二十亿人，这将占到全球人口的大约三分之一。呃，我我想问一下，呃，未来蚂蚁金服呃主要会在哪呃主要会进入哪些地区？然后第二个问题是说，呃，就是之前。蚂蚁金服的呃，这个国际化战略最成功的其实是在印度，呃，这次呃与与泰国呃的那个呃 e s s e n 合作是不是呃意味着你们将把在印度的成功经验向全球复制？呃，然后第三个问题是说，呃，就是蚂蚁金服之前的呃这个全球化呃就是遇到的一个问题在于。很多国家有比较完善的金融服务和比较严格的监管，嗯、呃，就是所以呃，就是一些比较发达的国家比较难以进入，所以你们在未来的这个全球化的过程中，这个问题会不会成为一个比较主要的问题？你们将如何解决这个问题？谢谢。Okay, so we have three questions for Mr. For Douglas, the first question. So we are aiming to have、uh, to serve two billion customers.、Uh, In ten years, so she would like to understand what are the regions that we're going to work on. So that's the first question. So,、uh, in terms of the regions that we're focused on,、uh, you see today two of the most important.、Uh, so, Thailand、uh, and India. The focus, I think, will continue to be largely in the Asian region、uh, in the in the coming、uh, near term years. And so,、uh, Asia has a huge population. Um, indeed, as Punma said, looking out across Southeast Asia, there's a huge population just within that component, and so Asia will be a big focus. I wouldn't, however, limit ourselves solely to Asia. As Ant looks out over the 10-year period,、uh, we may very well expand into other regions around the world. So the second question was、uh, for India, which is a very successful market, and then we have. It, does it mean now we are going into a trend? Does it mean that we are trying to replicate、uh, the Indian model? To a global in a global scale, we view the Paytm model as one that was that is very successful、uh, and it worked very well. I would say, however, that we're going to tailor our strategy in each market to that individual market. And so,、uh, in working with、uh, Ascend, we're bringing a lot of the same elements of the Paytm model, where we are going to import our technology. For example, to help them scale the business to a, a much bigger level, we're bringing our experience in terms of products. What was successful in China was not. What was successful in India, what was not, and to share that information、uh, with Ascend as they build their business. And we're also sharing things like risk management with them, and so that element of the partnership will bring as well. But each partnership will be tailored to the desires of local business. And we want our local partners to drive the strategy and drive that formulation because they know the markets、uh, the best. The last question. So we we have been entering into like、um, India and Thailand.、Uh, however, it looks like we're not moving into、um, markets that have better, who are better regulated, and also with、uh, more advanced financial systems. So, is there any reason, or is there any difficulties for driving into more developed markets? Uh, digital financial inclusion is at the core of our mission, and the core of what we like to do as, as an enterprise. And so, when we looked at markets to serve, quite naturally, India, and Thailand came up、uh, as important ones, and indeed, other ones in this region share those similar characteristics of a population that is underbanked or、uh, not banked, and that we can serve them. So that is important in our consideration. But I would say we're not limited to that, and so you will see us、uh, looking to expand in more developed markets and with more developed、uh, kind of regulation around that.、Um, and so those that will be part of the strategy going forward. Okay, we're going to take two more questions. We have two questions. Yeah, the lady over there, the lady at the end, from cable TV. 嗯，你好，香港财华社记者 Leslie， 有三个问题。第一个问题是想问一下，之前呃
《Wall Street Journal》有报道说，呃，六月有报道说，呃，蚂蚁金服会买入这个 a s s e t 的百分之二十的这个 shares。想问一下，这个会不会有这个计划？第二个问题是关于蚂蚁金服在呃上市方面的这个计划的这个进度，考虑的如何了？有没有确定一个上市的地点和时间表，以及筹资的一个规模？第三个问题是关于之前呃有 a s s e t 方面有提到，就泰国方面有呃有些呃呃民众他们其实并不拥有那个。Bank account， 那么要如何蚂蚁金服要如何解决这个问题呢？蚂蚁金服与 a s s e n 的合作到底是看中的是中国去泰国旅游的这个人口，还是看中的是泰国本地的这个市场 ？Three questions, thanks. So the first question goes to Douglas. The second one goes to you.、Uh, the first one is.、Uh, <coughs> So、uh, there was, it was reported by Wall Street Journal in June that we would have a 20% stake in Ascent. So please confirm、uh, whether the the investment size and if you have any comments on the investment size. Yeah, as, as I mentioned earlier, we're not going to comment today on the investment size or the the dollar amount.、Uh, our focus was on finding the right partner, and we're highly confident that with Ascent money, we have the right partner in Thailand. And then、uh, I'm going to go to your third question first, and I'm going to give it to、uh, Assam, Mr. Puma.、Uh, the question is, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm frozen here. Sorry. Again, the third question. Is that going to be boss? My Yi Jing Fu's 上市计划。啊，对，他，我先跳一下这个，我先去问一下第三个问题。关于如何解决那个泰国的有些民众没有那个 bank account， 然后是看中中国的旅游人人口在泰国的那个市场，还是看中泰国本身 ？So、um, there are a lot of people in Thailand who do not have a bank account. So、um, how are you going to solve that problem? And then the follow-up question would be: Are you more interested in working、uh, to provide services for Chinese tourists who are traveling to Thailand, or are you serving the people in Thailand? Sure.、Um, thank you. So first, in in Thailand,、um, actually people are pretty well banked.、Uh, about eighty percent of people do have bank account. Twenty percent have no bank account. So the way we solve it, the forty, the twenty percent first, and I'll address the the, the there's there's three numbers I want you to have. Well, actually two. First is the unbanked twenty percent, no bank account. Second is underbanked, the people who do have bank account but no other services. Uh, that's about 60 percent. On the unbank that we provide to our CP Group network, we have very strong, powerful retail distributions that through the network of 7-11, which is the second most successful in the whole world, that only after Japan. So that 7-11 provides a trusted agent network that for the fund in and fund out for the unbank population. On top of that, we have our own agent network and also work with two corporations. On the telco agents that we have additional about、um, today,、uh, about twelve thousands that, that can handle the, the fund in and fund out. That, so altogether, about almost twenty one thousand that in Thailand to serve the unbanked for fund in and fund out. The underbank, which is the bigger problem and the bigger, the, obviously the big opportunity as well, that is people that cannot qualify for loan, cannot qualify for investment product or insurance product,、uh, and for that. That we are, that we haven't launched the lending product directly to them just yet, that because we need to be prudent on how we collect data to create the credit analysis,、uh, payment distribution and collection effectively. So that's in the plan that to create the the data analytic credit rating that to be strong. We already start with the lending to SME, right? And these are the SMEs that that provide services that to our group company, CP Group to Group. And for them, they need working capital. The CP Group to Group that guarantee the purchase, but they need working capital to funding the growth. Asset money providing the the、um, very good options the, for the working capital loan.、Yeah. So those those are the the, the two segments: twenty percent and sixty percent underpaid. All right, we we always know、oh, that we go. Yeah, and then sorry, and the underpaid the the Chinese customer Chinese customer the is. It's always、um, one of the one of the big group. The, as you may know, I may not know, the Thailand is the second most popular destination for Chinese the,、um, globally, right? I think first is South Korean, the, but I think Thailand is beating to the first very soon. That with over nine million people Chinese traveler to Thailand this year alone, right? So the, so for us that's a huge segment, nine million and still growing. Look, if you just have ten percent of Chinese traveler to Thailand, that's Hundred, that's about hundred million over already, you know. So I think the Chinese, the Alipay users, 
Traveling to Thailand will always, always be the, our key focus because of the sheer size and certainly now with a partnership the, with M Financial. And Douglas, are you ready? We always know that we're going to get this question. Um, when is M Financial going to do the IPO? We IPO. Yeah, as it relates to the IPO, uh, at M Financial we see the benefits of being a public company but we don't have any current plans in terms of a timetable, uh, in terms of a listing venue uh, for an IPO. Uh, if and when we have those plans, we will certainly uh, make announcements to that, uh, but today we don't have those plans. Okay, Joe, you go with tea. Uh, I'm with Taijin.com, the CN. Uh, my question is from Mr. Finkett. Uh, as we can see, the partners that I Financial has invested or cooperated with are those in mostly in Asia, like in South Korea, India, and this time in Thailand. So I wonder, will I Financial invest in those companies in uh, besides Asia? Is there a specific plan? Thank you. And sorry, the question was: Will we invest in companies outside Asia? When will we invest yeah. in companies outside Asia? So you know, our focus in looking at, at partnerships has been to look at the countries uh, that are within this region and that are, are kind of closely connected to China. Naturally, our customers are going there today, and we know those markets the best, so that has been the focus. I would say, however, that we're not limited to partnerships in the Asian region. Uh, you may very well see us with partnerships outside of this region, uh, and so stay tuned, and we'll see as, as those strategies develop. Okay, thank you very much, everybody, for all the questions. Um, I think we're going to wrap this, and if we have any other questions, we have all the PR on site, uh, which will help you uh, for getting some of the answers. We now have the Q&A time to end. If you have any questions, please contact us with our contact team, and we can answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pinkerman and Ms. Mr. Douglas Fagan. Thank you very much. For